Good morning, folks. We're watching a solar tornado with the coronal cavity top hat come over the northeastern limb. This morning news is going to look a lot like how I thought yesterday's would look. We've got solar storms playing out here at Earth and technological issues to boot. Despite the one pop that produced the geomagnetic storms, this departing sunspot was largely stifled by the Earth-facing quiet, and he's throwing a tantrum at the limb. This is the solar wind telemetry for the last three days. You can see the impact, and especially how it built up to a peak in intensity only after the second impact occurred. This set a solid disturbance in Earth's magnetic field. It wiped the near-Earth electrons off the map. Cosmic rays are much decreased at Earth as the CME engulfs our little sphere, and G2 magnetic storms have occurred as the KP hit 6. The K index at Karuna has hit 7, and the Q index has done so twice. Since the impacts began, an entire city lost power in Africa after transformer explosions. We saw a downed engine force emergency landing during storm peak. Some of the many glitches seen yesterday were probably not related, but many probably were. Some were hilarious. What's not funny was the 4x increase in electrical fires I found reported online. Many of them wouldn't have even been reported yet, and that's 4x compared to a normal day. Let's come quickly to spaceweathernews.com and watch a calm 24 hours on our star. FYI, electrical systems, transformers, etc. all should still be on watch today. That thin dark filament in the center, still sitting there, is getting dense and remains the top eruption threat. Flaring has stayed down in C-class range and is expected to stay there as the only sizable sunspot group is departing down south. But folks, we are so not out of the space weather woods yet. Coronal whole stream impact is due any time, and unless it has a very kind magnetic character, we'll have more storms. And of course, the quakes come back as the coronal holes do. Two of the top quakes of the day were down south of the Earth spots. And speaking of them, the cyclone and tropical depression are still churning amidst other lows here. Australia and New Zealand don't need to wait for the tropical disruptions to see severe weather, however. Been getting a lot of questions about the North Pole heat wave, including worries about the end of ice. Well, that's not what's happening. Not only is there a good deal of uncertainty in the estimates, but even if it does break the freezing mark, it would be at least the third time in the last few decades that it's happened. Website members. I went a little upload happy there at the end of the year. We ended up with 103 episodes of Deeper Look. We did get out an episode of Fly on the Wall every week of the year. Nine of the presentations from the conference are posted, with Adrian's coming today. About 75 hours in 2015 added to the about 100 hours from before. We'll kick it off today with Planetary Geometry posted in a few hours this afternoon, and another episode of Fly on the Wall coming tomorrow. The floods remain a major concern in the southern U.S., and it will continue while areas in the north and the west have been cold and we will see a good deal more snow in the coming days. What? Another storm cell heading at Ireland and the UK? Sure, why not? You guys could use the rain, right? Jeez. Got shots of our star to close. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.